All right, welcome back everyone to the second half here at Seymour High. GNH enjoys a 14 to nothing advantage and going to receive the opening second half kickoff. Looks like we have a left footed kicker. It's a pooch. Eston Ryan fields it at around the 40 yard line. Good job by yeah. Eston. Used his tight end wide receiver yeah. skills there. Leif Johnson had the two touchdowns for GNH. One a, about a six inch run <laughs> on fourth and goal, and then about a 60 something, 60 something, they 60 said 69 something yard run. Yard run. Yep. That's what the guy said. Well, he's got a spotter, so. So GNH will start this drive for the first time in the third quarter at the 40 yard line. Owen Stimson, they're going to line up with a wing to the left, I formation, they toss it to Reamer, picks his way, short gain around the left side. It really, yeah. yeah. They give him forward progress. We'll call it second and eight. Wes Allen had a timely interception in that first half as well. And then the GNH defense twice got turnover on downs. Including one right before the half and flags fly. Looks like it's gonna be a procedure call yeah. against GNH. That's their first penalty in the yeah, game. Right. But it'll set them back five yards. It's only been a couple of penalties the whole game, right? So there's five guys on the defensive line for Seymour. Okay, <laughs> Liam Baxter's in the slot here to the near side. Shotgun snap to Stimson going Ooh. left and he picks up just a short gain. Wow. Third down. Third and long here. Third down and 12. Wind Ooh. picking up at our backs, we blowing might have across to move the over field. There, Mike. <laughs> Behind the booth. <laughs> long play call here in the huddle. They're going to have to hurry. Yeah, back check is checking his watch. <coughs> Reamer across the formation in motion. And now Baxter in motion. And the whistles and looks like another penalty flag. No, a timeout was called by GNH. Wow. Huh. There seemed to be a lot of confusion on yeah. the alignment on that formation. So looks like the sideline called timeout with 9.54 remaining in the third period. Very important play there. We don't want to see that. I didn't want to see those uh, just get away from them. So yeah, while we have a moment, we'll get a couple of other program supporters here. We have C&W Dentistry. We have the Big Y of Southwick, Massachusetts. We have Justin McEnroe, McEnroe Fitness. And we have OpenArmsClosedGuard.com, which is a wrestling website. We'll get to some others a little later. Yeah, we uh, had a score from uh, earlier. Kennedy beat Wolka 58-6, and uh, Naugatuck was leading Torrington 20-17. <coughs> Baxter in motion. Stimson throwing downfield, and it's intercepted at about the 38 yard line by number 12, Max Burrito. Burrito. Perfect coverage on him. He was just on that inside. Yeah, 
Brito was running stride for stride yeah. with the receiver. As you said, he had perfect inside position. And it's an interception. I Came mean, right it effectively is about the same as a short punt. punt. All right. Yeah. But the Wildcats will have it from their own 37-yard line. Once again, that four-wide receiver set. They hand it to Broden, going right up the middle. Broden. Picks up about five. Broden on the carry, picks up five, second and five. And looks like the Wildcats are gonna go quickly. Right back to the line of scrimmage. Same formation. They hand it to Proden, this time coming to the near side. It's close to the sticks, he pushes the pile and I think wow. he's got the first down. Yeah. More than enough. He does not look like an imposing figure from up here, yeah. but he's been able to push the pile on a number of occasions here tonight. So it's a first down pickup for the Wildcats with 9-10 to go in the third. It's that same two by two. Cortello takes a snap, hands to Proden. Breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage and then Push plows forward. ahead and falls forward yeah. for about five. Up the left side, surges forward for a gain of four, second and six. 73, Arian Johnson too with a big uh, block and push forward. This time the Wildcats huddle up. Cortello brings the play call in from the sideline to the huddle. And they're gonna go trips to the far side. One wide receiver to the near side. Proden it's flanking Jake George. Cortell in the gun. The ball is loose on the ground, it's and I think GH may GH. have it. There was yes, it is. Leif Johnson. Leif has had a game tonight, huh? He has. The captain has been all over He's the been field all tonight. All over that. Two Yanni touchdowns and now a fumble, fumble recovery. recovery. So the teams yeah, trade turnovers here to start the third period. Let's see if GNH can take advantage of the great field position. They're gonna come out with the full house backfield. They give it to Johnson, but he stood up Stuffed at the line of scrimmage yeah. and pushed back. Didn't fool them that time. Yeah, no gain on the play, second and 10. We have an early final to report in the NBL. Naugatuck has defeated Torrington by a score of 20 to 17. Wow. 20 to 17. The I don't final. know if you heard that. The public address yeah. announcer just announced there was a final in Torrington with Naugatuck Boy. prevailing, 20 yeah. to 17. Yeah. Both teams now six and one. Stimson takes the snap, gives to Reamer, Reamer. going left, breaks a tackle, and he's close Ooh. to the sticks. Let's see where they mark him. Looks to be short from the far uh, line judge. Yep, short by about a yard, but a nice run by yeah. Owen. Well, GNH wants to convert here, keep the drive alive. We're gonna go with a I formation behind Stimson this time. They give to the tailback, Liam Baxter. Baxter. He stood up right at the mark. It's going to depend on the spot. It's very close. Yeah, I know. Let's see if they give Let's him see any if we forward get a progress. They say it's his fourth down. That carry stopped at the line of scrimmage for no gain. So Baxter can't get the first down. So Stimson goes all the way over to the sideline to get the play call for this very important fourth down play. Fourth 
down and one. Six minutes now here in the third quarter. So I sweep going left to Baxter. He's got enough. I think he's got just enough yep. for the first down. Gets to the 35. Actually a pretty good job there by the Wildcat defense when he first got the toss. I thought he had a lot more running room. I yeah, me too. But he did get enough. Just enough. Quickly up to the line, a scrimmage out of the huddle. Looks like they're gonna go with unbalanced right, I formation, they run it left to Reamer. He's down this far sideline, breaks a tackle. Woo! Gets knocked out of bounds. Let's see where they finally mark it. I think he got at least enough for the first down. They are moving the chains. Spectacular run for Owen Reamer. Yeah, they put the ball down just outside. Lennon? That was Lennon? I thought that was Reamer. I know. The PA had announcer said, said linen, but I thought it was eight. Right? Looked like uh, eight to me. But if we are incorrect, far. we'll yeah. give credit to Cole. So Cole linen, right? It is a first down. Takes the snap. Boot. Fake. Caught by Wes Allen. He's down inside the ten yeah. and up the eight. Wes Allen Number on the completion six, from Wes Stimson. Allen. A nice throw by Stimson. Great so, catch there from uh, Wes Allen. It's just what he needed, Mike. Get, get that confidence going. So it is first and goal. I think the ball is spotted at the eight yard line. Try to see that other yellow lines there too, right? Oh yeah. Might even be the seven. Yeah, right? between I know, the right? seven and eight. It's hard to tell that. First and goal, however. The box is there, right? Stimson under center. Try that quick. Tried the quick hitter up yep. the middle, but not much there. Interior of the Wildcat defense yeah, stuffs that pretty anything. well. Yep. Looks like he may have lost the yard. Well, no, I'm sorry, he gained a yard. My, my apologies. That's all so, right. Four minutes now to go. Second and goal from the six. Stimson under center takes the snap. Reverse to Everett Rigby. He's got room. All Can he get to the pylon? He, he does. does. Number Everett 20, Rigby. Everett Rigby. And a six or seven yard touchdown run. 20 to nothing now, 3.36 to go. So a 46 yard drive. Just over four minutes. Beautiful execution on yeah. that. Now we await the Eston Ryan extra point. Kick is up, and That's it is good. good. All right, Eston back on it. So GNH now in front, 21, 21 to nothing. nothing. This is the largest lead that they've enjoyed at any point this year. That's for sure, yeah. And it was all thanks to the defense getting the turnover, the fumble recovery by Leif Johnson at the 46-yard line, and then they Couple took nice it in runs. from there. Reamer with a nice run. Nice pass to Wes Allen. Liam Baxter, Baxter with a, a couple of good big runs. conversion yep. run. Yeah. And then a nice completion from Stimson to Wes Allen. Wes Allen, yeah. And then... Uh, uh, we haven't. That's the first time I think uh, uh, Everett Rigby has carried the ball tonight. Uh, we saw quite a bit of them uh, last week. So nice, nice job by the GNH offense. A lot of people involved in that offensive drive. All right. Looks like there's two deep receivers. Jake George is one, right. and number 22 is the other. 22 Connor Shea. Okay. 
They're camped out around the eight yard line. Eston Ryan has one touch back here tonight and another deep kick with, with excellent coverage where they pinned Seymour pretty deep in their own territory. He approaches. High end over end kick. Fielded over Woo. his shoulder at the three yard line by Shea. And he's nice. tackled Ill at about the 15 yard line. Great coverage. Can you see who that was, Tim? Is that 89? Is that Robles? I see the guy moving. He's still in. He there he is. No, two numbers. Zoom in on it, in on him, Tim. Oh, he just I, turned around. I thought it was 89 it looks it could Robles, be, but he's still in there. So they give him forward progress to the 16, but another that guy great right kick over there. Yeah. and good coverage once again. So Robles, Robles with a nice tackle. If it was in fact yeah, Robles, we, we believe it was. Can you zoom in on it? Uh, it's too late now. It was all the way on that far side. So the Wildcats will take over. Might have been. 329 remaining in the third. Cortello and shotgun. They hand it to Proden. Boy. He picks up a few off yeah. the right side. We don't have official yardage tallies here, but it, we think he must be approaching 100 it's yards at be, this yeah. point. They've had a few uh, long drives. Second and six, Cortello and shotgun, hands to Proden again, picking his way. Oh, jeez. Cuts it back in the yeah. middle, picks up a few. Carried a player with him. He's a good running back. He yeah. always falls forward, never backwards. So they give him credit for four, has had two four yard runs, third and two. Why, Mike, he reminds me, remember that long time ago with the Avon? More to the left, more, more left. to the right, more up the middle. That's and he right. always fell forward. He always was going forward. He was actually the Connecticut Player of the Year that year. Wow. Colin Moore. Colin Moore, nice. Shotgun complete to George. To George and tackled there by number 19. Who oh, was 19? Tyler Roberts. Tyler Roberts, number 19. So it is enough for the first down. Once again, an excellent throw from Cortello. That's yeah. not easy to throw from the middle of the field all the way across to the sideline. He got it there in a hurry. George is a pretty sure-handed receiver. Once again, that four wide receiver set. They give it to Broden, Broden right up the middle. He's pushing the pile again. Keeps going. There it is. Pickup of about seven. Uh, but at this juncture, GNH will take that. Yeah, all right. Even though it's a Time big pickup on off. first down, a lot of a lot of seconds coming off the clock right. here. Just a minute 20 to go right here in the third quarter. Give him credit for eight on that. Second and two uh -huh. from the 39. Two by two again. Play fake. Yes. Pressure. They throw it deep. Oh, it's wobbling. Oh, it's. Is it caught? No. no incomplete. Yeah. Well, there... George made a nice job coming back for it because it was way. Yeah, there is a penalty flag on the play. Where is so it? Expect to see right, right where the play ended. Yeah. So it's going to be pass interference yeah. against GNH. Yep. George made a good adjustment to the ball coming <clears throat> back for that it. That was it. Right. It is a 15-yard penalty in high school football, not a spot foul like right. in the NFL. The defender, unfortunately, didn't come back like uh, George did. So that moves the ball into Yellow Jacket territory at the 46. Because the coverage was actually pretty, pretty good, good on that play. But, but it was They're, underthrown by so much. And then when he tried to come back, the GNH defender. He almost defender, made the catch. He almost caught it, yeah. It was knocked away by the defender, but the referee called pass interference. They give it out to Proden. Proden, oh, there it is. 
Cole Lennon, Lennon. diagnosed that yeah. right away. Nice job, Cole. Cole Lennon. Got an Great assist tackle. from Owen Adams. Looks like Labshare was there as well. So where is where is Lennon then? Was it? He's in a linebacker position. Yeah, I know. That's funny. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Down to about 20 seconds left in the third period. Second and 12. GNH showing blitz. Here they come. Ooh, Pressure, he steps up, th throws yeah, down deep. It's yeah. caught by George. Slung out of, out of bounds at the two yard line. Did you see that stop and go, Mike? He just stopped up, brought the defender in, and then took off. So that might have been the final play of the third period. Boy, Cortello was very close to throwing that across the line of scrimmage, yeah. but apparently he did not. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering. He was very close. All right, you ready, Tim? Seymour has the ball on the one-yard line. Use the, the offense. Yeah. 